am I going to do now? Hi. Hi. Sorry, we, we know it's pretty yeah, late. It's okay. Yeah, I, I, it's nice to see you. Come on in. Thanks. Hi. Thanks. We uh, ran into Phoebe. She said you were still up. Can I uh, get you anything? Oh, no, no, we're not going to stay long. Uh, Brooke, I just had to talk to you about Edmund. I'm really glad that you're back. And I want to hear what happened in Budapest. But, you know, if you're going to start defending my ex-fiancé, I'm going to tune out. This time he's gone too far, and you know it. Brooke, there's a lot of things surrounding all this that you don't know. I know that Erica is in Pine Valley Hospital, okay? Edmund did not put her there. Angelique, you know that that is not true. It was my mother. Your mother? Look, you can forgive Edmund now. This whole nightmare was not his fault. It was my mother's. So, before Helga died, she admitted to everything. She admitted that she was the one that gave Edmund Hugo's will. It was Helga? Yes. She found the will, and then she put it in a box of Flora's things, gave that box to Edmund so he'd be sure to find it. Then she changed her mind and destroyed the will. Why would she do that? Oh, it gets better. She also abducted Erica. I thought that Edmund... It, it's true, Brooke. Look, none of this makes any sense. Look, Edmund did kidnap Erica, but eventually he let her go. And Erica ended up staying with him... Free will. Until Dimitri met with Evans' demands. Erica was free to go, but, but she pretended she was still his hostage. That's right. You know, I know Edmund is very charming, but how exactly did he talk her into that? He didn't have to talk her into it. She volunteered for the job. Look, you just don't understand, Brooke. Edmund came to his senses way before he found out what my mother had done. He had given up trying to prove he was America or fighting with Dimitri. You don't believe that, Angelique. It's true. You know, I had given up hope of Edmund coming to his senses, ever. Look, oh, please, you've got to listen. I feel so bad about your mother, Angelique. I really do. I mean, I'm sure that you had no idea that she could be... I'm really, truly sorry. Brooke, I didn't come here for your sympathy. I want... What I really want is for you to try to understand about Edmund. Edmund kidnapped Erica. He may have been not as violent as your mother was. He may have had a change of mind. But the fact is, he held that woman against her will. But Brooke, we're not trying to deny that Edmund did any of that. We're not trying to make excuses for him, really. So what is there to understand? What there is to understand is... What made Edmund so crazy in the first place? Brooke, just try to put yourself in his position. I did, for months. Look, suppose you had found that will, and, and then it just disappeared, and nobody believed you. My mother actually burned Hugo's will. And then Dimitri gave his permission to, for the body to be exhumed and the testing to be done, and then Mother was right one step ahead of him again. She had the body moved, and nobody believed him again. I believed him. It didn't matter. I know that Edmund has wound up hurting you, but you have to realize that it was my mother that I am not the only one it. that was hurt by him. It was you, you were hurt, Erica was hurt, Mona was yes, hurt. Yes, that's absolutely right, but Erica eventually saw his point, so much so, she came over to his side, Brooke. It's too bad she's so traumatized that she can't testify to that, isn't it? Are you saying that you don't believe what we're telling you? I think that Edmund is responsible for Erica lying in a hospital bed somewhere. That's what I believe. Jack and I came here to just ask you to give Edmund a second chance. Not just for his sake, but for mine. For you, my mother has caused so many people so much pain. And I just want to know that one good thing was something she couldn't destroy. Erica's mother's really something, isn't she? Yeah. Feistiness must be hereditary. Yeah. Let's hope that Erica still has it. 
Heaven knows she's going to need it now more than ever. She's got to come back to me, Edna. Listen, you look beat. And you too? Yeah, but I got a couple of winks on the plane. You didn't even close your eyes. Go to sleep. Well, why don't you try to get some now? I still can't. Look, I'll stay right here, okay? The minute I hear something, I'll let you know. Oh, thanks, but uh, I'm going to stay. You don't have to hang around. You must have a million things to do. No, other than collecting my laundry, my dry cleaning, my mail, nothing. Now, don't give me that. I know you want to see Brooke. You see that she takes care of herself. You bet I will. The funeral's tomorrow. I know that it's not going to be easy. I'll be all right. Jack and Dimitri have been wonderful. I'm glad that you have them. Edmund too, Brooke. Please, just try to give him a chance just to talk to you. Do you really think that he's changed? Yeah, I do. I think he's finally got his head on straight. I'll think about what you said. That's all we ask. Good night, sir. Good night. Thank you for coming over. for not slamming the door in my face. I couldn't wait till morning. Impulse control was never your best event, was it? How are you? How I am is totally irrelevant and always has been. Why don't we skip the small talk and jump to the real issue? How are you? How does it feel to achieve your life's mission? I wouldn't know. Oh, come on, don't be modest, Edmund. You've done it. I mean, you've satisfied your whole reason for being. It was never my reason for being. Oh, pardon me, but it was. I saw you sacrifice your career and your plans and every human tie you ever had in your life. Not my tie to you. Don't make me laugh. I never lost that connection in here. Stop it. I never stopped loving you or wanting you in my life. You don't have a life. You gave it up for a shot at Maricud. And hey, it paid off. It paid off. Does being a Merrick give you an inner glow? Is it joy and hope? Is it, is it a bottomless well of comfort to you? No. No? No, of course not. That was my job, wasn't it? I love you. <laughs> you liar! You don't love me. You never loved me, Edmund. You used me. Never. I was handy to you. You woke up in the middle of the night covered with sweat. I was there to, to soothe you back to sleep. Good old Brooke at 3 o'clock in the morning, chasing away the shadows. I was like your own personal nightlight, wasn't I? You know the problem with nightlights, Edmund? People don't need them in the daytime, do they? Honey, I never stopped needing you. Did the promises slip your mind, Edmund? The promises that you whispered to me in the dark, that you wanted us to go on with our lives, that we should be together, that we should be a family? I wanted that. Sunrise comes and you start talking about visitations from the dead. After a few hours of sleep, you're re-energized for your quest. Well, you made it, didn't you? You got the Merrick Prize, didn't you? What are your dreams like now, Edmund? Sweet and blissful? No, they're not. And they never will be. 
unless you come back to me. You have astonishing nerve. I need you, and I'm not proud. This may come as a shock to you, Edmund, but I am. I mean, I may have acted like a St. Bernard for the walking wounded, but I'm a person. I have scars and hurts. I have wants. I have dreams of my own. Let you back in my life, I'd rather throw myself in front of a moving train. I don't blame you. I can't think of one rational reason why you should risk it. So why the hell did you come back here? To beg you. I don't deserve the time of day from you. I don't deserve your warmth. I don't deserve your understanding. Your forgiveness. I don't even deserve to be standing here. Staring into the wisest, clearest, most beautiful... Shut up! Eyes. The only thing I can say for myself is... I love you more than life. Stand there with a straight face and say that. Aren't you the least bit ashamed? Yeah, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed I let a twisted old lady drive me over the edge. Oh, fine. Fine. Blame it all on Helga. I'm ashamed that I sabotaged the one precious thing that I ever had in my life. That I hurt you and what we had, and that I didn't have the self-control to stop. I am ashamed that I didn't listen to you. Because you were right, Brooke. Every step of the way, you were right. And I know now. Well, bully for you. Only took one kidnapping and a violent death. <sighs> a slew of broken promises. You know, you used to be a writer. Why don't you write a story? Why don't you write a story about a woman who gave and gave and never asked anything for herself, and you can tuck it under your pillow, and you can read it to yourself when you have nightmares. Nightmares are gone. Then you don't need me. No, I do, baby, I do. Please, just forgive me. I don't want to lose you. Lose me? You didn't lose me, Edmund. You junked me. You threw away everything that we had. Then let's start all over. Not a chance. Not on your wretched life. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. 